The film begins with Sophie Scott, a young former downhill ski champion who was diagnosed with an illness years ago and lives blind with her mother. Her Olympic dreams were dashed when she was diagnosed with retinitis pigmentosa, a degenerative eye disease that leads to blindness. Since giving up on her dream of skiing, Sophie has devoted herself to catsittering her wealthy clients to make money. Recently, she had a grooming appointment for her cat and sneaked out of her house without telling her mother. And because she can't see her, she gets annoyed and insists on getting all the work done without anyone's help. When Sophie was about to leave the house, her mother stopped her and told her to go out alone. She apologizes to Sophie for going as a cat sitter, but after checking her account, her mother asks about the large sum of money there. Her mother accuses her of being a sugar daddy, but she quickly tells her that the money comes from tips she gets from caring for the cats of her wealthy parents. Once her mother was satisfied, Sophie left her house and hail a taxi to her next job as her cat sitter. After traveling several miles, Sophie arrives at a beautiful mansion owned by a wealthy woman named Deborah. This home is far from the hustle and bustle of New York City and is located near a quiet wooded area. Deborah greets Sophie and introduces her home's burglar alarm and her beloved cat. Deborah is going on vacation to celebrate her recent divorce, but Sophie is the only one she has accepted a cat sitter job offer on short notice. As soon as Deborah leaves her house, Sophie quickly attaches her tracking device to her cat's neck and video calls her friend's cam to get a closer look inside her house. Instructed to as Sophie sees her home through Cam's eyes, she marvels at every detail Cam reveals, from the intricate decorations to the stunning natural beauty that surrounds the property. After exploring the ground floor, Sophie follows Cam down to the basement, where she discovers three rooms. Her one in the room is a pleasant surprise for Sophie. A wine shop filled with bottles of rare and old wines of various brands. Unable to resist her temptation, Sophie steals the bottle, but Cam intervenes and refuses to continue her act of stealing. Here, the money Sophie's mother was asking for was not the money she got from tipping her cat sitter, but the money she got from selling expensive wine she stole from a rich man's house who cat sitters with Cam's help. I understand that. Sophie goes to her guest room to read the message. She's heard her mother encourage her to use her See For Me app, which connects educators of the blind and sighted. When she left the house to smoke, Deborah called and asked her to turn on the security system. Sophie was able to reach the system and successfully activate it by touching the window. Soon after, Sophie realizes that when she goes out to smoke, she accidentally locks herself in and there is no one to help her, so she desperately asks her friend Cam to help her. I asked for to her dismay, Cam didn't respond, leaving Sophie no choice but to download her See For Me app her mother recommended. After her app was installed, Sophie contacted her first available teacher and she was advised to ask her neighbors for help. Frustrated by the distance from her closest neighbor, Sophie hangs up. So she decided to contact her new instructor, Kelly, a tactical player from Florida. Realizing there is no easy way to unlock the front door, Kelly suggests finding another entrance downstairs. Sophie was determined to get out on her own, but Kelly ushered Sophie to another sliding door, through which she was able to enter. At Kelly's direction, Sophie manages to open the door and re-enter her house, but on the way, her burglar alarm goes off. She rushed to turn off the alarm and managed to turn it off in time. Excited by the success of her See For Me app and Kelly's mentorship, Sophie decides to save her contact with Kelly as a top priority. As she went to bed later that night, she braced herself for Paralympic skiing, where she remembered her dream of becoming an Olympic skier. Her boyfriend Cam encourages her to consider the Paralympics together as her spectators, but Sophie is still uneasy and haunted by the failure of her hopes that have cut her dreams from living her life. There is when she finally goes to sleep, we learn that someone has an eye on her mansion. The intruder sneaks into the mansion unnoticed and disables the security system to allow an accomplice to enter. The shore looked clean, so the robbers got out heavy drills and flashlights and headed for Deborah's prized possessions. When they approach an expensive painting and put it away, 
they reveal a transparent wall that actually hides a secret locker. But before she can get her treasure, Sophie wakes up from her slumber and her excitement causes her to wake up. She leaves her bedroom to investigate and goes to find the cat. When the girl pulls out the tracking device, tapping a button on the app makes a small beep. Meanwhile, the robbers were trying to keep as quiet as possible, but suddenly they heard a small beep and panic broke out. Sophie followed, but she didn't think the robber was doing the same. While searching for her, Sophie and the robber nearly confront each other, but Sophie keeps the robber away and she is lucky to be saved. Meanwhile, another robber hung a device on the wall that opened to reveal a secret $7 million locker. The sound of a door opening catches Sophie's attention and makes her uneasy. After searching the house, the first robber rushes to Dave, a second robber named Arnie, telling him he suspects someone is in the house. Sophie overhears it and Arnie tells Dave to keep drilling open the lockers while he searches for anyone still at the mansion. Sophie panicked and terrified, and when she turned around the vase was broken. This lures Arnie to their location, but Arnie manages to escape before he gets there. A broken vase confirms the presence of another person in the house, and Arnie rushes to find him before he calls the police. Sophie finds a safe place and immediately calls the police to report the intruder. Ask Kelly for help. Kelly immediately orders Sophie to stay, while Ernie looks at Sophie's belongings in her guest room. Her panicked Sophie refuses to listen to Kelly and randomly enters the house to find a way out for her. Kelly gets tired of telling Sophie to stay downstairs and she helps her escape by telling him where the robbers are. However, in terror, Sophie runs to the front door and escapes. She is just about to approach the door when Arnie informs Dave that there is another person at her house and calls her boss. After being told by her boss to keep her job, Dave attends training and Arnie decides to search her house to find Sophie. When the intruders both lose focus on their work, Sophie sees her chance and makes her way to the front door. To her chagrin for her, she encounters a third robber, Otis, who is always outside the house. He ends his conversation with Kelly and takes Sophie to the other robbers. A search of Arnie's cell phone reveals that she has already called the police. Her intruders ask her boss how to deal with Sophie, but when she says Sophie is her blind girl, her boss dismisses her as no problem and kills her. I just ask you to help me. With the robbers running out of time to break into the locker before the police arrive, Sophie lays out her plan and offers the robbers ideas on how to get them out. But in return, they must give her a share of the $7 million hidden in a wall safe. When the robber suspects the blind girl, she shows him a bottle of wine that she stole from Deborah's house and intended to sell elsewhere. Sophie then calls 911 again to cancel her original call, but the exchange said police had to respond even after reporting the false alarm. Upon hearing this, the group throws away the tools they used to break in and turns off the lights before the police arrive. After a while, a police officer comes to inspect the house to make sure everything is okay. Lieutenant Brooks strides into Sophie's house to check on her. Her eyes scan the room for signs of trouble. Despite Brooks' relentless investigation, Sophie remains silent about the intruder. Just before Brooks leaves, Brooks tries to ask Sophie one last time about the intruder, but she continues to insist that Sophie was a false alarm. The operator then suddenly tells the cops that Kelly has filed a call with her blind girl, who has exposed Sophie's lies about her. Lieutenant Brooke immediately calls for help, and Sophie's heart races as she decides to catch her robbery when Arnie shows up. Their plans quickly fall apart when one of the intruders, Otis, attacks them and a fight ensues between the two. Otis tightens the rope around the officer's neck until he is exhausted. In a desperate attempt to escape, Sophie snatches her gun from Brooks, hides in her house and calls on Kelly again for help. Under Kelly's guidance, Sophie bravely leaves the house, with Otis chasing her from behind. Kelly orders Sophie to go home because it's getting cold outside. In the greenhouse, Ernie finally finds Sophie hiding with a knife. Kelly helps Sophie position herself so she can shoot in the right spot before shooting Ernie. 
Meanwhile, Dave is busy drilling the safe. Sophie then leaves, and Otis finds Ernie's body some time later. As Otis enters the basement, Sophie appears and shoots Otis in the stomach. Yet, as her internet connection drops and Sophie struggles to aim her properly, the man manages to get close to her. And finally. At this point, Dave, still busy digging, is the only remaining robber in the mansion. At the same time, Sophie's cell phone battery drops to 5% and Kelly helps track down the third robber. She fires her first shot, but it misses and as she prepares to fire her last shot her cell phone breaks, leaving her alone with Dave. After her conversation with Kelly ends abruptly, Sophie remains obsessed with Dave, telling her to wait until the police arrive. Realizing Sophie is blind, Dave robs him of his share of the money and tries to escape from there. He ignores Sophie's repeated warnings and continues towards the bag. Sophie tries to stop him, but Dave's movements awaken her instincts and she is forced to give him her final warning. Dave falls to his knees and surrenders, but his true intentions are revealed when he takes Lt. Brooks' taser. Luckily, Sophie reacts and shoots him before he can pull her trigger. After she defeats all three invaders, Sophie hears Dave's phone ring and tells her boss Rico that her job is done. Not wanting to miss an opportunity to steal, she then went to the safe deposit box to retrieve the money while waiting for the police. But she didn't know Rico was waiting outside. Her boss then decides to take her problem into his own hands and shows up out of the blue, much to Sophie's dismay. Here we learn that Rico is Deborah's ex-husband and that he hired all three robbers to break into the safe and steal money from his wife. Rico also reveals that Deborah didn't know about the safe or the money in the house, and offers Sophie to keep quiet and help split the money. But Sophie's hesitation causes Rico to take drastic action. The man pulled out her gun and started chasing her all over her house. Sophie hides in the kitchen, trying to escape from her Rico. In her last effort to divert his attention away from her, she threw the glass in another direction. Rico falls for the trap and Sophie runs out of the kitchen, but the man takes aim at her. He fired at her and hit her in the leg. Despite her injuries, Sophie escapes to the greenhouse, where she finds Ernie's body. In her smart move, she stole his cell phone and used her fingerprint to unlock it. She then dials Rico's number and reveals his location when his phone rings. Seizing her chance to turn the tables, Sophie quickly opens fire, severely injuring Rico. Despite her gunshot wounds, Rico does not give up and launches her brutal attack on her. Sophie's heart races with fear, and in a desperate effort to defend herself, she grabs the wine bottle and swings it with all her might, hitting Rico in the head who has already been injured in the process. The girl punches Rico in the face, and Rico lies dead in front of her. After eliminating all her intruders, Sophie collapses to the ground and waits for the police to arrive. After her hospital treatment, she is receiving therapy from her loving mother. Here Sophie confides in her mother her ambitions to compete in her Paralympics and return to skiing. Her mother is overjoyed and unsure how to pay for her tuition, but Sophie clutches her backpack and smiles, hinting that she took some of the money from home. As the days pass, Sophie calls Kelly again and she tells her that she has resumed skiing, this time with the help of her friend Cam, who is a guide on the slopes. Her film is about Kelly effectively telling Sophie to take her breath and prepare to slide down her mountainside to reclaim her status as a ski champion. It ends with a motivating scene for a new life path. End. Conclusion, Sophie, despite her blindness, triumphs over the intruders and discovers her inner strength, determination, and resourcefulness. Through her journey, she not only foils the robbery but also rediscovers her passion for skiing with the support of her friend Cam and coach Kelly, setting her on a new path to pursue her dreams once again.